Are you looking to create your Facebook ad and you are confused on how to set up your campaign and what you have to do in order for you to fully take advantage of Facebook's unique algorithm to get you the lowest cost per lead and lowest cost per sale? If so, then continue to watch this video. What is up everybody, Fred Lamb here and welcome to part two of my multi-part Facebook ads tutorial for 2021. Now, if you have not watched part one, which is an important video for you to watch, make sure that you click the button over there. You can actually see part one. Now inside part one, we talked about your Facebook ads preparation. These are the things that you must get done before you even create your Facebook campaign. Now in part two, I'm going to go into detail about your Facebook campaign structure and more importantly, how the campaign objective plays a huge role in your Facebook ads. So let's dive right in. But before we do so, make sure that you smash that like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so that each time I release a brand new video, you're going to get notified right away. So that being said, let's dive right in, right into your campaign structure first. So when it comes to Facebook ads, there are three layers. The first is your campaign. The second is your ad sets. And the last part is the ad that you want to actually show to the audience that you want. Now, the campaign is pretty self-explanatory. However, it looks simple, but there is a underlying secret or untold secret about your Facebook campaign, which is simply the campaign objective. Now, when you first choose a campaign, you will have the option to choose from 11 different marketing objectives. These objectives comes from things like video views, website traffic, conversion, store visits, reach, and a whole lot more. But here's the thing, whatever you choose in the marketing objective, it's absolutely superbly important because it is basically what you are telling Facebook that you ultimately want from your Facebook so before I actually dive right in into these 11 objectives, I wanted to actually first head over to my whiteboard to actually show you the understanding of how these objectives are created and also, most importantly, how these objectives are really tied to the audience that you absolutely want to see your ads. So let's go to my whiteboard right now. All right, so we're back to our whiteboard and right now I want to actually show you the correlation between the marketing objective that you choose under your campaign and also the targeting that you are going after. So let's use yoga as an example. And let's say yoga has 10 million people in this audience size. Now, again, I'm just using this as an example and I'm not sure if there are really 10 million people, okay? And let's say that this circle over here represents the entire 10 million audience that are interested in yoga. Now, how this entire audience is really built up, it really based on the behaviors and the interests of every single user on Facebook. So let's say if they have read an article that is about yoga, they're gonna be added into this targeting over here. Let's say that they are interested or they have been shopping at yoga websites. They're gonna be added into the targeting. They may be watching videos about yoga on Facebook. They have been following yoga pages on Facebook. That's another one over here. They may have obviously checked in. So if they go into a local yoga studio and they have checked in that they are in that yoga studio, that's basically added in there. 
they may have been having photos uploaded that are related to yoga. Okay, there may be simply their friends are interested in yoga, into yoga, and they're commenting about it. And they are basically going to be put into here. There may be people that essentially have just started to simply interact with yoga related ads. They're going to be added into this pool. They may have bought or add to carts a yoga related item. They're added right into this pool. So as you can actually see, this entire pool of the 10 million audience are really created based on different behaviors and different part of the process that the person is in in their buying journey on Facebook. So now what happened is that when you are advertising on Facebook and choosing the marketing objective, you're not going to actually go after the entire 10 million audience size. And if you do, it's going to be absolutely a lot of money, right? So what you do, let's say for an example, if you are choosing to have people that are into lead generation. So what happened is that when you tell Facebook that your objective is to simply generate leads off of Facebook, what Facebook actually does is that based on this 10 million audience, they will simply look and find within this 10 million, based on all these behaviors, who are more likely to actually become a lead. So you're not going to actually have your ads shown to all the entire 10 million. You're going to be actually having a very small segment of people that simply are going to actually opt in based on all the behaviors and data points that Facebook has. Now, an example, let's say that you are into e-commerce and you are simply wanting purchases, right? So if it is e-com purchases, what will happen is that Facebook will actually look at, okay, who is most likely going to be buying from this targeting of yoga? Because you want actually the conversion of this and Facebook will only show your ad to this piece of the pie. So as you can see, what Facebook does is very simple. Facebook simply look at all the behaviors and then within the targeting that you have selected and then at that point, Facebook will actually show to the small segments that will most likely to convert based on their action and behavior on Facebook to actually show your ads to the targeting that you want. So that's why choosing the right marketing objective is ultimately superbly important to get the maximum result. So now that you have the full understanding of how the marketing objective plays a huge role in your audience targeting. Now let's talk about the 11 objectives. Here's the deal. You can ignore majority of these objectives, especially for those of you that are running an online business or essentially you are just simply wanting to generate leads. Now at the end of the day, here's the most important part. Whatever objective that you choose, Facebook simply helps you optimize your entire campaign based on the desired outcome that you want. So let me give you a quick example. Let's say that you have a video that you want people to watch. So if you want to do that, then you simply choose video views for your campaign objective. And what Facebook is going to do, given the fact that you told them you want video views, Facebook will help you ultimately get the lowest cost per view based on the user's behavior on their platform. But here's the thing, Facebook is not going to optimize for you to generate leads. They're not going to optimize for you to get tra traffic to your website. They're not going to optimize for you to actually get a sale. All they are doing is simply just getting people that will most likely watch your video to watch your video at the lowest cost per view. So if you are running essentially, let's say an e-commerce business, video views is definitely not one that you want to start right away. You would actually want to choose conversion 
And because by choosing conversion, you're telling Facebook specifically that you want an action taken on your website. And in this case, when it comes to e-commerce, when you are setting up your actual assets, which is simply the targeting that you want, you have to specifically choose purchases so that Facebook will know that your overall goal when you are advertising on Facebook is to really get the lowest cost per purchase. So choosing your objective is very important. Now, if you are into generating leads, so you may have a coaching and consulting business, or you may simply are a solopreneur that wants lead for your car insurance company or mortgage or life insurance, etc then you can actually choose between lead generation or you can simply just choose the conversion. But when you are setting up your asset, you are specifically choosing leads so that you are telling Facebook that your goal is to generate leads off of your website. So as I said, yes, there are a total 11 marketing objectives, but if you are starting out and you have an online business conversion, and lead generation are the two that you should be focusing on. And majority of the time, people choose the conversion to actually go right out of the gate. Now, there are something that not a lot of people are aware of. Whatever you choose in your marketing objective actually plays a role in the CPM. Now, what's a CPM? CPM stands for cost per thousand impression. So at the end of the day, you're actually charged every 1000 times your ads has been displayed on the newsfeed or on their entire Facebook network. And with the 11 marketing objective, even if you are targeting the same audience, you're going to actually see a different CPM pricing on the objective that you choose. And all in all, obviously the conversion is going to be the most expensive because everyone else are bidding on conversion as well but you are really needing to use the conversion if you really want to generate leads off your website or really generate a sale. So if you're starting out and you have an online business, simply choose conversion. It's going to actually get you the best results right away. Now, once you chose the conversion, the next part is the campaign budget optimization. So a lot of people ask, what is the difference between CBO, which is campaign budget optimization, and ABO, asset budget optimization. So now here's the thing, there are mixed results. Some people are getting way better results with CBO. Some people are getting way better results with ABO. Now let me share with you the difference between CBO and ABO and I'll share with you at the same time on what my recommendations are. So first of all, CBO. CBO, like I said earlier, stands for campaign budget optimization. What happens is that your budget is controlled at the campaign level, regardless of how many assets you have under this particular campaign, Facebook will help you allocate the budget to your assets based on the results that you are getting. So in a nutshell, let's say that you are running a hundred bucks a day and you have four different assets. What will happen is that asset number one may spend literally $50, asset number two may spend maybe $20, and an asset number three, maybe 10, and asset number four may be spending five. So again, the distribution is gonna be uneven. However, Facebook actually wants to get you the best result. So what happens is that Facebook will move your budget around within your campaign to different assets and they are going to basically use their learning machine and algorithm to basically help you get the lowest cost per conversion. So basically that's what CBO is designed to do. You're just having a budget and let Facebook really control where the budget is allocated in the asset level. Now with ABO, you're essentially controlling exactly at the asset level on a specific budget per targeting. That's what ABO really stands for. So you can have, let's say, even distribution of your $100 a day budget with four asset. You can actually go 25, 25, 25, and 25. So again, that is the difference. It's just ABO and CBO. Now, what do I recommend? 
So if you are just starting out and you have yet tested and actually found a winning offer or winning creative, what you want it to do is simply start with ABO first. Because you, in the beginning, when you're running Facebook ads, your goal is to actually find the right targeting, the right offer, and the right ad. You're not scaling yet, and you're not, and you shouldn't be thinking about scaling until you have checked off the winning product, the winning targeting, and the winning message. Once you actually get these in place, then at that point, you can think about scaling. So if ABO is really all about testing, you wanna basically set up more ad set so that you are spending enough on each of the desired targeting that you wanna go after to find the specific targeting message and also offer that works phenomenally well. But now when you start to scale, you would want to actually use CBO. With the CBO campaign, once you actually start with ABO, you found a winning creative offer and also simply your messaging, then what you can do is you can actually scale with CBO, knowing for a fact that you already tested and you know your offer is going to work and you're just really using it at scale. Because with ABO, the only problem is if you start increasing your budget with the ABO, what will happen is that it will reset the algorithm and the entire learning machine. But with CBO, there isn't really such restriction. You can actually go more aggressive on increasing your budget and not needing to reset the learning phase. So again, my ultimate recommendation is that if you are testing out a new offer, a new promo, start with ABO first. And when you want to scale, you duplicate the campaign to a CBO campaign and actually scale with a CBO campaign. So in a nutshell, that's really it when it comes to the campaign structure. You wanna first select your marketing objective, your ultimate goal on why you are advertising on Facebook. Number two, make sure that you start with ABO if you do not have a winning offer tested yet. But if you already have a winning offer and a winning creative and you know exactly who your targetings are, then you ultimately go after the CBO campaign. And in a nutshell, that's really it. So I hope that this gives you more understanding about the campaign structure and how the campaign absolutely plays a major role in your Facebook ads. And in our next video, we're gonna actually talk about the assets. I'm gonna show you exactly each part of the asset, what targeting, what strategies you can go after. So make sure that you smash the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit that notification bell so that once that video released, you're gonna get notified right away. So other than that, if you have yet to watch part one, make sure you go into my YouTube channel and simply watch part one first, which is the Facebook ads preparation. So again, leave me a comment right down below if you actually learned a thing or two and if this really opened up your eyes on a different part of Facebook ads. And I look forward on seeing you in our next video. Bye now.